Hi, so these things, solar panels. This is obviously a teeny tiny one for demonstration, but you can get these in really quite large sizes. Are these days truly quite cool. They're about 15 to 22% efficient these days, and the generation cost is somewhere in the region of 10 pence per kilowatt hour. So, fantastic. But of course, they do have their problems. I mean, we're putting them in the sun, and they're black, so they get hot. As they get hot, then that percentage efficiency decreases quite dramatically. And a big issue really is how to keep them cool. And if you're keeping them cool, is there something we can do about that heat to be able to get secondary generation and increase the efficiency even more? Well, very often suggested are these things. So this is a thermoelectric generator. It runs on something called the Seebeck effect. And this is a thermoelectric cooler running on something called the Peltier effect. And they look very similar, though. In fact, they look the same. They are actually similar. They work on the same principle. They're built slightly differently to try and maximise either the cooling or the uh, generation effect, but they are essentially the same principle. If I take two semiconductors, a P-type and an N-type, I slap them together and I apply a thermal difference, it will generate. That is the Seebeck effect. But equally, if I apply an electric current, it will create a temperature difference, and that is the Peltier effect. So, they're often confused with each other, but they are slightly different. However, in terms of their operation, not one jot. They're just one is the reverse of the other. So you can use thermoelectric generators as coolers, or you can use thermocoolers as electric generators. You'll get a slight difference in percentage efficiency. So I've them. covered my device with a bit of black tape because it's a black material, so it should absorb the heat better to get and the light better and get hotter because of that. But of course, we could try cooling down the cool side, and what I've got here is a heat pipe from a CPU for a laptop. It's got a cooling arrangement there. We're going to let the wind blow through it, although we could dip it in an evaporative cooler, or we could put a cooling solution on there, which we probably do. And if I put that onto there with a bit of thermal paste, then we have our hot and cold side. If we stick that in the sun, we should get a difference in temperature there, and we can see what kind of result we're going to get. So here is my Peltier device. It's got some black tape on it. It's in the noonday sun, and I've added a heat pipe from a PC here to carry away the heat because it's sitting on a bit of insulation in the direct sun. We've got a temperature on that. of 42 degrees. So we've got 42 degrees on the black surface. We're carrying that away into the shed. We've got a bit of wind, so we've got a bit of air cooling going on here. And we're managing to generate 58 millivolts, which is not even enough to light an LED with a jewel thief. But I do have a bit of non-freon refrigerant here that I can spray on that bin, and we can cool that further down and see what happens to the temperature. Sorry, a generation. You can see immediately it's going up. We've got 123 millivolts. And as this evaporates and cools, this will reach a maximum peak of about 240 millivolts. Okay, so I'm sorry about the wind noise and sorry about the sound of children playing. It is a sunny day and it's the first day of the holidays and we're in a council estate, so there's kids playing in paddling pools. Anyway, our rough and ready experiment where we mimicked putting a solar this behind a solar cell by making this surface black, I would say it worked. We have to still to cool the cool side to keep that temperature difference, but we did get extra generation out of this. And we've got this little square we got 200 millivolts. Surely if we did that, we'd get an awful lot more, and the answer is yes, we would. So the big question then is, well, why don't they do it? I mean, you know, we've got a solar cell, we've got all of the structure up there to hold it. Why not just put an extra layer of this behind it and we can get the heat generation? Well, it comes down to one simple thing, and that is cost. The cost per kilowatt hour of these things is not even quoted in kilowatt hours, it's quoted in watt hours. These things will produce something in the region of um, one dollar per watt hour. The experimental versions have got down to 80 cents per watt hour, and that's from a paper I was reading in 2021. 
So the generation per cost is just exorbitant. I mean, if you think about these things, this is generating at about 10 pence per kilowatt hour, and this is generating about $1 of kilowatt hour, you're in the order of 10,000 in terms of magnitude, so it's extremely expensive. Now these things obviously, they're about five to eight pounds when you buy a standard one. And um, if we were to buy one, it's not a lot, but we have to buy maybe 100, 200 here to put this on. So that would push up the price of that solar panel just exorbitantly high, and your cost per kilowatt hour of generation wouldn't really be that much better. You'd be better just plugging it into the, in the grid. So there is an issue, a big issue, on how much these things actually cost, and that's why they don't do it. Now this is an off-the-shelf standard model. Its temperature you can reach is about 275 degrees centigrade and the reason for that is it's all soldered together. Above that temperature it starts to fall to pieces. So let's say we wanted to do this on a rocket stove. We could cool it and um, maintain a temperature. We should be able to get generation off a rocket stove. Well these won't do because you'll just burn those out immediately. The rocket stove, remember, reaches four to five hundred degrees centigrade in no time at all, so those would be no use for that. What you'd have to use for that is the high temperature versions, and they do sell high temperature versions, but they are considerably more expensive. So the whole issue around using Peltier devices, sorry, CBAC devices, for thermoelectric generators in either solar or on your rocket stove comes down to one simple factor, and that is cost. The cost is exorbitant. So much so that really for how much it generates it is just not worth it. It's an interesting experiment to do but you couldn't do it on a mass scale because the cost would be so high people just wouldn't buy it. And that means we're left with alternatives. Although this is solid state and very attractive because you do nothing with it but stick it on there in some kind of cooling arrangement that is just too prohibitive for a general use thing. Now you do see these in automotive, but the kind of cars they put them in are sort of 50 to $100,000, and so as a portion of the car, it doesn't actually represent that much. But in terms of energy generation, when you're looking at competing against things like 10 cents a kilowatt hour, then this is a no starter, really, as far as I'm concerned. It's why we look at other things. Now, as I say, these are in the region of 5 to 8% efficient, this one here, which is just your off the off the shelf, bog standard off the shelf, but they can get up to 13% efficient for the more advanced research materials. But again, unless you can bring that cost down, then that is probably not a good option just right now. Anyway, I thought I would go into that because I'm always asked, and it's always suggested, just stick a Peltier on it. And you could do it if you don't mind paying through the nose for it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. And please do remember to like and subscribe.